Thank you very much, Professor Smail, for talking to us again today. And uh, today we will be asking you uh, questions uh, that come from our viewers who watched your previous interview. So the first question comes from uh, Song Duta, a graduate student from the University of Illinois. So turbulence is a problem which has intrigued engineers as well as mathematicians over the years. Do you think that Navier-Stokes' existence and smoothness problem is an essential question that has to be answered before we can understand turbulence fully? Or do you think there is still a lot to be understood in its dynamics properties? Yeah, I would say that the question uh, that I phrased in my problems for the uh, 21st century uh, as a, a very clean mathematical question and it would be good to answer that for, for in any case, this stands as a mathematical problem. Uh, and probably an answer would give uh, some good insights into turbulence. On the other hand, I think it may very well be that the, the main secrets of turbulence will be unlocked without going that route. One can take a kind of a approach towards Navier-Stokes equations, taking some kind of finite version, data-oriented version, and work with that. There could be other ways of uh, resolving these problems without actually getting the existence or non-existence of solutions to the Navier-Stokes. Okay, and the last interview you mentioned that biology uh, can inspire many interesting mathematical challenges. Uh, why would you think so, and why do you choose biology over economics? Oh, uh, this, you know, I look at these things not in terms of just mathematical challenges, far from it. Mm -hmm. I want to see, uh, you know, the development of uh, important sciences of our era, and because I am a mathematician, I like to see, you know, how uh, mathematics can be used to help developing these big questions. Now, biology is, I think, the big, and intelligence, those are the biggest scientific questions that are emerging out uh, of the last century. And so uh, it's natural to try to see how to understand those from all, way, all points of view, but especially for mathematics, we can see uh, these decades how the uh, attempt to use mathematics in biology and intelligence has uh, been of great uh, help in inspiring new mathematics, and the mathematics has been very helpful in inspiring uh, approaches to biology and intelligence. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, we have another question from Richard Cerezo, the founder of uh, Mathimedia. So during your Coxter lecture series, you described the kernel approach to mathematical immunology and drug design in great detail. Could you please sell this field to the aspiring mathematicians? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I don't want to sell the field, no. You know, I think uh, we found it very useful in my, you know, I have found it very useful in my general work in understanding a learning theory and the mathematics of intelligence. Uh, you know, the kernel structures, uh, reproducing kernel and so on, seems to have uh, played a, a very big role in, uh, in these questions of uh, human and uh, artificial intelligence. So, uh, that's what, you know, that's what I've learned. You know, I don't want to sell that <laughs> to other people so much, but other people may have different points of view. But I found the notion of a kernel, a reproducing kernel, reproducing Colonel Hilbert space, mm -hmm. and the associated uh, mathematics of uh, regularized least squares uh, is an you know, important avenue, giving important insights into intelligence. Yeah, so I think the field is now sold and many young mathematicians will want to pursue it. Thank you very much. Uh, well, in light of uh, new technology and internet and large corporations which use uh, research uh, divisions, do you think uh, mathematics uh, uh, is moving uh, from academia uh, towards more industrial roles? No. No, I think you will see, and you, you see now, some movement of mathematics away from traditional mathematics departments. Mm -hmm. Because the traditional mathematics departments 
are not accommodating these new developments in mathematics coming from intelligence and biology and economics too. Uh, so that people in these fields are uh, learning and doing and are becoming excellent mathematicians in their own right independent of uh, mathematics departments. You see some of the best mathematics done by computer scientists, statisticians. Yeah. And so there is that kind of movement away from mathematics departments to these other fields, statistics, computer science, even biology. Uh, but that doesn't mean that that's not, it's different from a moving away from academics. I, you still see that uh, in the academic setting probably as strong as ever. In fact, many of the industrial uh, associations are giving less effort to developing uh, mathematics than before. IBM used to have a great mathematics department. It's practically gone. So why do you think they're dismissing mathematics then? Uh, well, the pressures of having a more immediate uh, return on their investments and the money. So I think that's what happened to IBM. It, the mathematics was uh, proving... Uh, maybe you could say, too long, long range mm -hmm. in its effects. And they had to bring uh, you know, more immediate returns to profitability of, of the resources. I think that puts it fairly. So you for, think for IBM and I think other places too, there are still other industrial places that, that are developing mathematics. I was in Toyota Technological Institute for eight years, just recently. Uh, but that is not exactly an industrial lab, far from it. It's endowed by Toyota, so I consider that a uh, academic based. Uh, it was Computer Science Institute, but it was doing important mathematics. So where do you think uh, in the future the most crucial research of mathematics will be done? Do you think it will be at universities or will it be at the fields and in those prospective areas, as you mentioned, biology, technology? So? Oh, I think... Uh, it would be mainly focused at universities, mm -hmm. but not necessarily in mathematics departments. Okay. It's very, very interesting. Uh, the next question is from Dr. Mario Morfin from York University. From your point of view, how would you characterize the current economic crisis? Uh, was it the role of mathematics? What is the role of mathematics in the context of the world economy? Well, I think, you know, the economics, uh, it, there is an economics crisis, and I used to be in the 70s working in economics, economic equilibrium theory, so I thought about those questions much more then, but even then I was not uh, willing to uh, make any kind of predictions what holds for the future in economics. If one could do that, one be would become instantly a billionaire, if one could predict the economic right. future. And so I certainly uh, begin to understand from my work in economics the limitations of uh, what economic economists can do, and certainly the limitations of what mathematicians can do uh, towards re you know, relieving this uh, crisis. I think we do have a big economic crisis, uh, and who knows if it will be resolved sooner or later. Uh, my own guess is probably a little later than sooner. Uh, mm -hmm. But there, uh, one thing is, one has to understand the limitations of just mathematics or economics or mathematical economics. And uh, you know, it's such a huge issue of politics intervenes. Mm -hmm. And uh, then it gets very complicated. Uh, the political scientists will not be too much helpful there either. It's the politicians that win their elections, and it's not a good sign Winning elections is not a good sign for being a good leader of the of the world or the exactly. country. So, uh, do you think we will ever get closer to predicting the economic crisis? Uh, probably not too close uh, to predicting an economic crisis. Uh, you know, you have some at the moment. There are some evidence of these things in advance, but predicting is another story. Uh, accurate prediction of any kind of crisis is almost impossible by the nature of the word crisis. Crisis is something which means unpredictable almost, right. something not expected. So uh, certainly 
I think it's important to understand the limits of what scientists can do on these yeah. issues. So, for instance, this summer we had here a group of international students uh, as a part of uh, Fields MyTex uh, undergraduate research program. And one of the groups was actually focusing on the study of uh, crisis. Uh, so, do you think uh, we should still be promoting such research if, uh, <laughs> if in fact, as you said, crisis is crisis and uh, even the word indicates that it's something unpredictable? Yeah, well, I think... Uh, you know, the more knowledge and study and analysis of the issues around uh, potential crises certainly uh, is a good idea. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm not saying one shouldn't yeah. not uh, analyze, one should, one should indeed analyze uh, the situations that give rise to a crisis more than predicting the crisis. Mm -hmm. But understanding the developments uh, around a crisis and, you know, the issues which can be, some of these issues can be dealt with before possible crises arise. Sure, I think those things deserve a lot of attention, study, research. Yeah, thank you very much, Professor Smale. It was uh, quite a pleasure talking to you today. Thank you.